Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace, back again with another 10 video ads video. Once more concentrating on the VHS format, I have before me 10 VHS tapes. Start off with The Bride. This is from Good Times Home Video. Throughout most of the lifespan of the VHS format, once Good Times came into existence, uh, they recorded tapes in the LP mode. But near the end of the lifespan of the VHS format, they began using the SP mode. And so far, all of the tapes that I have found from Good Times that are in the SP mode have a face label on the cassette shell that says either gold series or platinum series but what if it's sealed you can't see the face label well one way although it's not foolproof is to feel the heft obviously two hours worth of tape is going to weigh more than an hour's worth of tape except for the fact that in our early days of home video, the cassette shells were very sturdily made and were therefore heavy. And the later uh, released tapes were cheaply made and are light. And I've even compared the two. I've taken an old 60 minute tape and a newer 2 hour tape and the old 60 minute tape will weigh more so you can't always go by weight but then of course there's the old standby recorded in the LP mode and as far as good times is concerned the slogan we make collectability a way of life on all of the videos that I have from them that are in the SP mode that slogan is not on the box Another way to tell is to take the running time, which in this case is 118 minutes, and compare it to how long the tape is. In this case, this is a T60, so it holds 60 minutes with the tape. Made in Korea. So it obviously has to be in the LP mode. You also notice the record tab is missing. Good times never re uh, remove the uh, record tabs. It's something I've always had to do. So, on Good Times tapes, if the record tab is still in place and you take the tape and you place it in your VCR, it's just going to sit there. You have to put it in play manually. Whereas, with the control uh, record tab missing, it's going to go into play automatically as soon as you insert the tape. But the other thing is, with the record tab in place, you can inadvertently record over what's on the tape whereas if the record tab is missing you can't now I used to record a lot of uh, tapes off of uh, pay channels pay movie channels and at one point I had over a thousand of those tapes and I finally just got rid of them and decided to stick with pre-recording but there were many a time when I had a tape that I had recorded and removed the record tab and then decided I wanted to record over it. All you have to do in that case is take a piece of single sided sticky tape and attach it to the top and run it down to the bottom so it covers the record tab and then that way you can record on the tape. Then, once you're done recording, just remove the tape and you can't record on it anymore. Until the next time you put tape on. Okay, this next one is from Good Times Home Video. Crucible of Terror. Now, this uses their later logo. This uses their earlier logo. 
No mention of LP mode. No mention of, it, of them making uh, collectability a way of life because they hadn't adopted that yet. But you can go by um, the date at which they copyrighted the uh, summary and packaging, which in this case is 1986. That was way before they came out with gold and platinum series tapes. This is a 95 minute movie on a 45 minute tape. Now, as you noticed with this, it's a nice fancy label on there and everything. But early on, Good Times just put a blank tape, I mean a blank label on there and you had to put on the label what was on the tape. And whoever did this one did a sloppy job because the label's upside down. Now the description of the film on the back reminds me of another film. Meet Victor Clare, a bizarre sculptor who is forever in search of beautiful young women as his possible models. But there's more to Victor's madness than meets the eye. The disappearance of several young girls leads the authorities to the Mad Artist Studio, where, in the dark, musty rooms of this house of horror, the police discover the sadistic truth behind Victor's eerie and unusual effects of his true-to-life creations. Kind of sounds to me like the Vincent Price film House of Wax, Crucible of Terror. Okay, this is part of George A. Romero's um, Dead trilogy, if you want to put it that way. Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, which I actually saw on a drive-in, and Day of the Dead. Now, this was released by Anchor Bay using their Video Treasures line. And frequently, with Video Treasures releases, they're in the LP mode. But not always. And in fact, in this case, they used SP mode. The movie runs 102 minutes, and there's 102 minutes worth of tape there. A little to spare. It does say for a clear picture, it does tracking on VCR, which is another uh, usual giveaway for it being recorded in LP mode or even SLP mode. But from my experience with Anchor Bay, uh, they started off using slower speeds and then progressed to SP mode, but they continued using the disclaimer for clear picture just tracking on VCR for quite a while. Please forgive. Beverage of choice. The Glass House. Obviously, this is a rental copy. From Columbia TriStar, who never used slow speed tapes. Okay, I have a lot of pre recorded videos that center around toy electric trains. Lionel, American Flyer, Mike's Train House, that sort of thing. And I have two Lionel train sets. This is a packing video that came with one of their sets. Neither of my sets came with a packing video though.
Now the distance you might think that's a slow speed tape, but it only runs 27 minutes. I'm actually kind of surprised Lionel was using VHS as late as 2004. I would have thought they would have switched to DVD by then. But that's just me. Next up we have Live Flesh. Now this is from Orion Home Video which is a label I have to be careful with because some of their tapes are in the LP mode and some are in the SP mode. I have found that if it simply says Orion Home Video or if it has the logos Orion Home Video and HBO Home Video then it's an SP mode tape. But if it has the Orion Home Video logo and the Vestron Video logo, it's going to be a slow speed tape. And I've got one that has three logos on it. It has the Orion Home Video logo, it has the Vestron Video logo, and it has the UAV logo. UAV, another company that used slow speed. And that tape is in the slow speed. This is in SP. Can't see the tape really all that well behind the label. After Orion went bust, seems like their catalog of uh, films has bounced around all over the place. This is a very confusing Hong Kong action film series to keep track of because it is known under several different names, different territories in Asia use different titles. Sometimes a later film will be released as if it were an earlier film and vice versa. It'll be numbered out of sequence. The, the whole series is a mess, but it's a really good series, especially the first two installments. Now this film stars one of my major, um, one of the major actresses in Hong Kong that, that uh, I just love, and that's Moon Lee, the other being Michelle Yeoh. Moon Lee. One of the reasons she's, uh, she was such an awesome action uh, fighter is that uh, she is a trained dancer. In fact, she owns her own studio, so um, her moves were always uh, quite poetic, even though uh, the action scenes would get very violent and over the top. But this series was actually directed by Teresa Wu. So you can't just say, well, those men beating up on women and so forth. This series started the whole guns and girls genre in Hong Kong, or girls and guns, guns and girls, however you want to say it. And it goes under the title here as Midnight Angels. However, the on-screen title is Midnight, spelled M-I-D-N-I-T-E. And on the back, you'll see a picture of, um, what's her name? Cynthia Luster, who was in the third film in the series. The first film in the series normally is known as, or usually no known as Iron Angels, but it's also known as uh, Fighting Madams and um, uh, another title too, I can't remember. Anyway, that film had a character in it named Madam Sue. This film has a character in it named Madam Sue. 
in the description they say that Madame Sue is played by Cynthia Luster. Well, Madame Sue, which is in the first film, star, uh, was played by um, Oshima Okara, I think her name was. Yukara Oshima. Uh, that first film is known as Iron Angels, uh, Fighting Madam, Angel, and Angels. The second film was known as Iron Angels 2, Fighting Madam 2, Angels 2, and Angel 2. The third film, Angel 3, is also known by the title of Return of Iron Angels. Now, what's strange about this series is, in the first film, Yukara Oshima plays the villain, and, spoiler alert, she winds up dead. But then, five years later, she is in a later um, film in the series, and she plays one of the heroes. Go figure. Anyway, I watched part of this film, and it's a hodgepodge, a collection of things. Um, first of all, the pre-credit sequence is taken right out of Angel 3, but the rest of the film is the first film, Iron Angels, if that made any sense. And in fact, Cynthia Lester is not listed anywhere in the credits. The only place she appears in the movie is right at the beginning, before the credits. And where that sequence starts is actually a good length into the, the third film. So, it's a mess. But, if you can track down Iron Angels, I would go with that. Because that is the actual um, name of the film. And it is complete that way. I have that on uh, VHS, but I also have it on uh, DVD and VCD and the VCD looks vastly superior to this Cheech and Chong's Nice Dreams before there was Columbia TriStar there was RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video For some strange reason, it appears as if it had originally been printed as nice creams, and then somebody hand writ the D over it. Just the same on this side, but not on this side. I don't know if that was intended or not. But, anyway. Now, as it turns out, I already had this uh, film. In fact, I already had this release. This exact same release. So I have two copies of this. Um, give Fox their credit. Uh, Paramount had a budget line. I don't remember the name of it now, but they used low speed tapes. Universal licensed out a lot of their tape, their, a lot of their titles to Good Times that released them in slow speed. Fox's budget line used SP, Key Video. And this is the Alfred Hitchcock film, Notorious. The Key Video label is still around. 
I've seen it on a, on some DVD releases that I have, and just as is the case here, well, on the DVDs they say uh, Key Video, a division of 20th Century Fox, a division of News Corp. Um, but on here it says um, Key Video is registered trademark of the CBS Fox Company. But the tapes are real heavy and sturdy. And in the SP mode. Okay, and finally. Night Warriors. Dark Stalker's Revenge. I always have to look at these things more than once because... I'm dyslexic. Looks like it is volume three. Capcom. I guess this is based on a video game series, or there was a video game series based on this. Capcom, look for the Night Warriors video game series on the Sony PlayStation. There are three episodes on this tape. A Declaration of War, Origins Revealed, and Could Curiosity Kill the Cat? Speaking of which, I've got a cat right here. Okay, I received two packages yesterday, one containing three CDs from Sweden, one containing a CD from Germany, and I'm going to have to break down and show those at some point, because I have a lot more that uh, I plan to get. Until next time, stay awesome, and I ran over 20 two minutes. Oh well.